December 13th, 1954. Look, I don't have much time, but I found these old files in one of the cabinets in an older building in Barry's scrapyard, and I need you to look at them. Just please give them a read and get back to me. I need you to read them. This is what was written. July 4th, 1951. This is a first report of one of Wooden Brothers Scrapyards, also known as Barry Scrapyard. I'm the leading foreman of the scrapyard, Thomas Layden, and one of my primary jobs on this worksite is to update and report on locomotives, rolling stock, faceless and or not faceless that come in and out of the scrapyard. It is also my job to make sure that all locomotives are properly maintained and are functioning inside the scrapyard itself. Today, our scrap moving steam engines arrived and began work immediately. I do not know their names yet, but I will update this in the next report. The problem is that these engines are non-faceless, which might be a problem for them as I suspect as the days continue. Work is proceeding as normal with no interruptions, but with luck with these new engines here, we will be ahead of schedule. July 7th, 1951. Second report. Work is proceeding on time with no delay. In our small fleet of steam engines, we have one J97, primarily known as an austerity, named Marcus, he does not bear a number. We also received two twin locomotives, both being Great Western Railway 5700s. 5764's name is Benjamin and 5765's name is Lucas. Our final scrap engine is an Ivan Forum T, who does not have a name. He tells me he apparently came from the Corey Brothers Ore Refin Refinery up in Essex, his number being 43129, but I overheard him being called a Dougalbug by some of the workmen, whatever that means. The engines are not the happiest bunch, but so far they are hard-working engines and they are fulfilling their purpose as required. I hope these engines can cope with the soon arriving scrap steam trains and keep to schedule as required. I have been worrying about these engines that they might actually fall under the same hammer as their fallen brotherhoods have. A report in three days is required. July 10th, 1951. Fourth report. We've returned to our normal schedule, but the locomotives are becoming worn out with all the work, and with all this heat we're getting, I do not blame them in the slightest. The engines also requested to me that they get moved to another shed on the 11th, because of all the screaming and crying they've been hearing from their fallen successors. Now I see the horror British Railways and myself are going to have to put these engines through. I granted their request, and they have been moved to the west side of the facility as I am writing this. We also received our first train of non-faceless rolling stock, which when obviously the engines disliked having to move around, but they did also with a reasonable pace. Obviously I feel bad for these engines, I can't send them away due to a tight schedule and a heavy price tag contract with British Railways, nothing else to report. July 17th, 1951. <sighs> Fifth report. We are currently behind schedule because of an issue with one of our four engines. Those issues being Lucas's coupling rod broke and it is under repair as I'm writing this. The other two being Benjamin not leaving Lucas aside is refusing to leave him. Ivan is having severe mental problems and is refusing to work. He explains to me that on the 15th that an unknown engine ready for scrap pleaded with Ivan to save her and it was a mistake that she was there. She also tried to tell him that she wasn't supposed to be scrapped. This engine has not been identified and we have suspected that she has indeed been scrapped. Ivan also tried to explain to me that he began to hear voices telling him to save them and to stop killing his own kind. We've kept Ivan away from the other three engines until his mental state approves. I don't understand why British Railways couldn't have just sent us faceless engines. We would not be having these bloody problems if they did. We're behind schedule and we will try to recover as soon as possible. July 20th, 1951. Sixth report, things are going to hell here and I've sent word to British Railways to send us a small fleet of faceless engines if they wish for our services still. To put it simply, Lucas was accidentally scrapped and dismantled while being in the middle of being repaired. When I heard about this, I ran out to try and save him, but I was too late. And at that moment, Benjamin woke up and asked what the problem was. I broke the news to him and now he is refusing to work and has not stopped crying for hours. Marcus is fine, but with everything that has happened over the last couple of days, he is distraught and is also refusing to work. Marcus has also started crying as I'm writing this. 
Ivan has gone in completely insane, talking to himself and yelling that whoever moves towards him. He screamed all night last night for no reason. I mind you, only stopping to catch his breath. I have been informed by the higher ups that he has been scheduled for scrap in the next upcoming days, and that they cannot sell him because of his mental state. Both Marcus and Benjamin have been put up for sale. We are very far behind schedule, and we cannot work until this problem has been fixed. July 27th, 1951. <sighs> Seventh and final report. I have been removed from my position as leading foreman, and I'm being allocated to one of the smaller Lancashire scrapyards. But my final order is to make this last report to Barry Scrapyard, which I will do now. Benjamin has been sold to a small line up near Edinburgh. I unfortunately don't know the details, as Marcus was sold for scrap on one of the other branch scrapyards, as he refused to stay here any longer. As for Ivert, well, he went out screaming and pleading. As the workman walked towards him, he pleaded with them not to kill him, and unfortunately for him, he finally fell silent as soon as the smoke box came off. <sighs> I wish these engines had better endings to their lives. But what can you do when you're working with these alive iron horses? Do we as humans have to be judge, jury, and executioner? Besides, the new team of faceless engines arrived on the 23rd and we are still behind schedule. But hopefully, we will be returning to normal processing of scrap metal soon. This is Thompson Layden, signing off for the final time. <laughs>